Hello and uh, welcome back. Today I have something cool and that is uh, it's a professional GPS DO and it is from uh, Repco. It's the 1804 P9 and the P9 is a beast. If, if you are uh, known with, uh, with this brand, uh, with the Repco, you probably know there is also an uh, M version and an L version I think and both are a little bit different. I think the the M version has one output with uh, 5 megahertz and then you have the L version that has five outputs of 5 megahertz. But this one is the P9 and the P9 has five outputs with 10 megahertz. Exactly what we have here and also five outputs uh, with one PPS uh, TTL level. So this is the biggest and it is a 19 inch. Here is a big end connector for the GPS. We have here the sound outputs and the TTL outputs right there. Are we going to play with it? We're going to open it. And yes, this is a professional one instead of these little ones. Uh, also, it's a little bit older. Uh, it does have a Trimble receiver. Um, but uh, it is six or eight channels, we need to find out because I think in the M and the L version there were six channel GPS's with, which should be enough to, to monitor uh, uh, enough satellites at the time but it needs a really good view to the, to the sky and with these new ones here, these are 12 channels so there is a bigger chance that they, uh, that they have a look. So it needs the it needs a very sensitive antenna. So hopefully it works. I have this little preamplifier once. I need to check if the antenna works because those are uh, five volt. It goes here, and I think they're dual voltage, three volt and five volt. So I think I will not blow them up. And it is donated by a viewer. It is donated by uh, Steve uh, G8XGG from uh, xggcoms.com and uh, I came into contact with him because his company makes uh, Digimode cables. So uh, I want to play later with Digimodes with my uh, with my Yesu there, the TF, is it FT450? And uh, so I bought a cable there on the continent here. I think it's in the UK and uh, just see uh, to get some good quality. And uh, it turned out that uh, Steve watches my channel and he enjoys this a lot when he enjoying making the cables. And he thought it would be cool to, to sh uh, let me show the, the Repco. So, uh, well, if you look at the front, it looks almost brand new. Well, these are professional, as I said, and they, these were from a data center. And well, data center should be clean, and it is, as you can see. And it is not very damaged, it survived also the trip from the UK to here. Here we have uh, the frequency output, the TTLs, 1 Hz, and here we have the 5 outputs, 50 ohms, 10 MHz. And here we put the antenna. We have here an RS232. It is not NMEA, as you would expect nowadays, but it is some other protocol. But there was a guy, uh, David Taylor, who made some uh, software, so we can read that output. So let's just uh, carefully lift the top. It's all uh, aluminium. Looks quite cool. I think this is stainless steel screws. It all looks like some good quality. Screwdriver fits pretty good. I have not tried it. I haven't even tried to switch it on yet. So we probably need to lift it. There is here a little. Yeah, look at it. Okay, that's the ground wire. So that was the screw then. Wow. Wow, look at this. Here you can see they really put some attention in uh, building it well. It's all, all nice with clips, all nice in sections and all the components are just straight on the board. All these little details. Well, here we have the antenna input. So this is the GPS uh, receiver. This is the Trimble. Uh, 
it says it's the 28479D. I'm not sure if we can find out if this is the 6 or the 8 channel, so uh, I will try to find that out. Uh, regulator DC. Here we have the signal. This is also not M uh, NMEA. This is some Trimble protocol. And I think it was TSIP protocol. And you can read that with the Trimble Studio. I have an older version which is license free. And so maybe we can get tap into that to see what kind of data comes out. But uh, first we can just see what comes out here. Power supply area, whole processor board, and here we have the crystal overnized oscillator, 10 MHz, and it is from uh, HVD. And the rest is all logics. It's the processor that runs the program, and uh, well, the, the, the main oscillator here runs on very close to 10 MHz, but then the program here just adjusts, adjusts it's very fine from the information from the GPS. So here comes all the data, and I think they compare it all to the one PPS, and then they try to get it very, very accurate. And then on the, there is an adjust pin here, if you change the voltage there, on the adjust pin, the oscillator goes a little bit up or a little bit down. So it takes a while before it's all stabilized. Works exactly the same as, uh, as these Chinese GPS DOs. But uh, yeah, this is just years before that and uh, probably done a little bit better. Yes, and then here we have, I think it is the one PPS that goes here. And then it goes here in the digital board and it is just perfect. And then the one PPS comes out here also. Okay, I'm looking a bit on the internet on that number, what's, what's on the Trimble receiver. And it seems it is the Larson SK8. And um, that is kind of good news because that means it is actually an 8 channel GPS receiver. And yeah, there, there was a, a whole uh, test kit. And, uh, and they explain how to connect uh, to connect to the serial and how you can read the, the TSIP information. All that information I got also from Steve, but I wasn't sure if it was a six or eight channel. And here it even says it can also do NMEA, but I'm surprised because I only see one serial output. So, but maybe there is another two but it's just not connected. So I can read about that later. Okay, so we, here we have this module and it looks a lot alike. And here they have two serial ports. And they explain that later. There is this 8 pin connector. And here is the RX data for port 1 and the RX data for port 2. And here we have the RX data for 1 and the TX data for 2. So this pin header here should have both serial ports and in my board only one serial port is connected so maybe I hear they explain a little bit more that it is uh, already good CMOS system uh, levels so you don't need to do your direct communication without them so that is cool we don't need any line drivers so Let's see, that could be interesting because maybe one port has the TSIP output and the other port has the NMEA maybe. Oh, and yes it is. Here they explain the communication and so I really hope this is this SK8 module because here in port 1 we get the default TSIP output but on port 2 we have NMEA that would be great okay that's all very nice now just have a look at the gps here this one is perfectly spot on so what i'm going to do and my lab is not used to that i'm going to switch it off and connect the same gps antenna to the 
Okay, as I said, I never do this. But I know my cable is uh, quite long. These are my other backup GPS DOs programmed on different standards. And I have my cable here. It so, should be long enough. Let me just switch off the GPS. Okay, now it's immediately red in my. G so let me run on the internal oscillator. Okay. I have a distribution amplifier with uh, with an internal oscillator also, so I'm still so my lab still runs, but just a little bit less precise. Yes, I have a dual voltage. It is one of these antennas with a magnet, and it is 2.7 up to 5 volts. So, well, if it breaks, I have my backup here. Uh, it needs an N connector, so I need. Yes, I have. So here we have the back of the device. Let me just plug in the N connector and the antenna. It will probably take some time to make it lock, if it even will lock, because I know that uh, you need a lot of. Uh, you need a lot of signal for these uh, GPS receivers to receive something. The, the new modern receivers are now a lot better. Um, but let me just switch it on. Meanwhile, I just look for the, the software that I can have a look. And we power it on. The AC power is on and the alarm is on. I don't know why the alarm is on. That could be because there is no GPS signal. Ah, the alarm uh, quickly switched off and then the GPS went on. So why is there still alarm? Maybe it's not. Uh, it does see satellites, but maybe it doesn't see any lock yet. So we need to wait and the oscillator also needs to warm. So probably it's just still on because the oscillator is not warm yet. But I try to see if I can get something from the output. So uh, I built now my own serial cable. Instead of using a full wired, I just had this standard just by somewhere. And all the cables were connected. And that became a problem because apparently it doesn't use the CTS and the, the other for the hardware handshaking, but uh, it was waiting for it. So it's better to have them not connected. So now I only connected three wires and I think that was pin 5, 2 and 3. So that is the, the data pins only. So pin 2 and pin 3 and pin 5. So and then if maybe the device starts to wait on, on a ready to send or clear to send I didn't want that because the cable seemed that it didn't work, that I didn't have any output. But okay, just make this cable with the three wires. And then you can see here now I have output. And my alarm is still on, but the GPS is already locked. Because but the control light is not on yet and the alarm is uh, still on. But this is good news. I have an eight satellite receiver. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a lot um, better. And the timing seems already good. It is in 3D mode already. Oh, you can see my precision. And I think there is also a lock program. So this software, you can see immediately then what uh, how many satellites it's receiving and yes maybe I can have a better antenna than this little puck I think it's called it's just this little universal Chinese thing but it does receive a lot of satellites okay after I uh, built that uh, correct cable it was quite simple I also could have used the one I had and then just cut the other wires but I thought okay I still have a cable lying around I will just put the connector on the other end and uh, I was just logging because I'm really wondering how long it would take uh, before uh, before it would uh, 
yeah, I think it is good. And it turned out it is about 45 minutes and I hear a click, the alarm switches off and they are both green. So and here it is, the alarm switched off. And uh, when you power on the, the device, the alarm will immediately on, be on and then none of the lights will uh, be switched on. And then I think here it took 10 minutes, but yesterday I also had, to, had it switched on because it's already my second day. Um, and now I think 45 minutes, the control also went on and let's have a look at the screen. Okay, here it is. And it is also green now in the corner. Okay, so it also communicates its uh, status. And that is here. Oh, okay, here it comes from interactive. Uh, it switched to control. And of course the fixed 3D was already there. And if you look here at the signal strength and the number of good satellites. Well, the number of good satellites is almost all the time seven. So it's sometimes it is a little bit six, but mostly it's seven. The 3D fix, well, you can see that was within 10 minutes, so we don't really see that. And I think this is then the trend, or well, the trend will follow. It will be well, kind of the same, I think. This is the illusion of precision. Smaller is better, but it has been flat at two all the time. So I think that is good. And well, here we can see the strength of the satellites and it is in the top all the time. So I think you can use, and maybe because this is the more modern uh, Trimble, that it is uh, the 8 uh, satellite version. The S SK-8 is maybe a little bit more sensitive than uh, in the other uh, 1804s. So this is the satellite receiver I'm using. It's just one of those uh, Chinese ones. And the nice thing is they are uh, 2.7 up to 5 volts and I need the 5 volts. So, uh, but I think the most important thing is that it just has a good uh, view to the sky. And uh, I just put it on one of my uh, chimneys. For all the stories I have read about the Repco that a lot of people have problems with the GPS antenna. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I don't have them because maybe I, it has a good view to the sky. But secondly, I think also because it is one of the later uh, Garmin receivers that is in here. It is not the 6th channel, but the 8th channel. And uh, yeah, maybe uh, also it uh, evolved to a, to a better receiver, more sensitivity. Because yeah, it just locked in, in I think within 5 minutes it already had a lock, 3D lock. And uh, then I needed to wait 45 minutes for the internal oscillator to also uh, stabilize. And according to the manual, we need to now uh, wait seven days for the best result uh, because it is trying to trim now the oscillator. And uh, yeah, that, that will uh, take a while. But uh, yeah, if you look at the screen, uh, now I even have eight satellites uh, inside and uh, yeah, I absolutely don't see the problems. I have seen graphs from other people that really go up and down, but this is just straight. No problems at all. I'm really happy about this. Maybe I want to open it and see, because I read that this same uh, module, this uh, SK-8 and the Trimble mo module, there, there is an old manual about uh, a test board that they have built around this uh, this. Uh, Trimble module. And the secondary report here, as we can see, should do the NMIA. So that would be very interesting. And it's supposed to have two serial outputs. One is the TSIP that we can also play a little bit with the Carmen Studio. And uh, yeah, maybe we can have a try to do that. But also I want to try to connect that second serial port. And uh, well, let's have a look at the, at the PCB. Okay, when I open it now, I might confuse a little bit the oscillator because the temperature will uh, change. But uh, yeah, I, I want to have a look. If I uh, can have access to that second port there. So if we have a better look at it. We have here the board. And then this is the 8 pin header. and. So in pin one should be the second serial. So let me first see, because here we have only 
one serial connector. Uh, here on the board is only one serial connector. This one goes to the control board. This one runs the T-SIP. We can also try to see if we can do something with the T-SIP and uh, look at uh, Carmen Studio. That would be interesting, but then I like to follow the traces and see if we can use that second port. So I thought uh, before I just uh, disconnect the GPS receiver from the control board of the of the Repco. Uh, I thought I put my second antenna out that I just show you, put them in the same spot, and try to connect that to my Chinese uh, GPS. That should work. Uh, and then maybe do a comparison. But first, I want to show you the screen because now it has been switched on for about four five hours and uh, I can show you the signal on the computer okay I think it's clear that we can just use this antenna because if I look at all the averages here the 3d fix has always been there here is a little I don't know what happened why at uh, this time it went back to 2d but still that is enough to have a look so that didn't change too much here we have the signal strength well that went down clearly or no it was the number of satellites that went down here it uh, switched down to six well six is not bad because that is what the old receiver does this one does eight so nothing to worry about and here we see the signal strength it is all in the top air so no worries there here we have the p dub well i don't think we need to worry about that that is all good here we always have been in control so no problems there and this is the signal strength which is very high okay well my chinese gps do that i usually use has been switched on now for 10 minutes well, the lock was there already in two minutes because it yeah it was maybe well, the same amount of time like four to five hours it has been switched off so it was very quickly uh, just recalculating it just remembers where are the satellites where to expect them because uh, when it receives just one satellite it notes its time and then it's very quickly trying to predict where the other satellites are going to be so that is very fast uh, yeah, now it is a little bit off, so I need to wait a little bit longer, but still. So this is now, my Chinese uh, standard is now the uh, my lab standard, and now I'm measuring the output of the, of the Repco. So I put it on my frequency counter here, I put the output of the Repco to the frequency counter. It is uh, a few digits, so that's nice to see. And then you think, wow, there is a difference between these two GPSDO, but that is correct because my other GPSDO is still not completely synced. It says it's 0.9922 of a hertz off, so that is uh, like uh, 1.8 thousands. Uh, and if we look here, so that one is a little bit low, uh, so then this one becomes a little bit high because you can do more counts in the same uh, loop. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So this is a hertz. So we are talking about here three of a thousand of a hertz. Well, if you're adjusting your transmitters, <laughs> that is enough. Here is the other GPS. Yeah. Well, as you can see, it's still trying to. Well, also the internal uh, internal oscillator is still heating, and meanwhile the the disciplined oscillator is trying to adjust. So, yeah, they are working against each other, but at some point it will stabilize. But, uh, yeah, this is below the hertz here, so, yeah. I was actually a little bit scared that maybe my Chinese GPS DO, this BG7, uh, not, were not that good. And the BG7 TBL, that uh, these were not that good. But now already within 15 minutes, it is almost locked. Now it's a stand zero, 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 zero. So now it should be closer. Well, this one is also almost there. Yeah, it's still adjusting a little bit. Yeah, now it's a little bit higher and then it becomes here a little bit lower. But uh, they are actually good. 
actually, if, I wonder if if I uh, I wait a few days more if it is really exact exactly the same. But then I really need to run it all day, and this one is kind of big. Why well, doesn't get that hot? That is nice. This one usually runs uh, 24 hours because. Uh, and it's with the switch, the power supply, so I don't mind too much. But the rest of the lab, I always uh, switch off. It's I have just one big main switch, except for this one. It's on a different socket that it just, uh, yeah, but now I switched it off for a few hours. So it will take a while before it, uh, but I'm not disappointed at all. Okay, I'm taking out the board now. There are four screws, but one is underneath the receiver itself, so I need to remove the receiver itself also take out the antenna here is that 8 pin connector so we get the receiver out let's put it in we need to be safe with the ESD so the, this is my mat I'm wearing this of course and uh, let's see if it's correct and well it seems that the, the SK8 and the SK2 are more or less the same this is the 2 well this looks like the receiver I have here but if I look at the 8 I think it is exactly the same so let's see if it makes sense then the pin 1 should be the pin that goes to maybe I get a microscope because all the pins here seem to be connected no it is not it is not which is pin 1 I think pin 1 is that one right here and it is not connected here so 1, 2, 3, 4 Five, six, seven is also not connected. So this could be exactly that is cool. So if we look in the bottom of the board, then it would be pin one that's not connected because that is data two. Then is here the prime power. Then three is the transmit line from the first. Then four is the backup power then we have 5 is the other rx line 6 is the one pps 7 is also data for the second port not connected 8 is the ground and that is indeed the ground so let me get this pin 1 and Seven, connect the cable, see what we can do. Well, there are not too many choices. It is just RX and TX. And if it's the other way around, I will just turn the cables around. And uh, oh, let's put it back in the Repco and see if we can see if there comes NMEA data. I connected now my uh, statistics uh, frequency counter to the Repco and my Chinese uh, reference and as you can see the, the Repco is still trying to get closer to the frequency because the max was 0 0.006 and then it was trying to go lower because you can see the average and now you just saw the input going even lower yeah even lower so it is still adjusting it is still disciplining the or oscillator <laughs> because if i reset it now we get the new minimum maximum and that will be closer and closer every time okay this is funny to see now we find out in it's adjusted a little bit uh, too much and then it will try to to go up a little bit that is that is quite normal because it adjusts and goes too much too low too low and then until it is completely flat 
Okay, we're looking again at the uh, to the Repco. It is its normal uh, output. So now I try to do a second port. And that second port is to my COM 17 and it should be 4800 non 1. So if I connect, but then I see a lot of things. So I do have communication. Can I maybe do hex? Yeah. So I do get data. But I have no clue what it is. So I have put the Repco now for three or four days uh, on permanent power in my lab. So that doesn't switch off when I leave. And uh, the mini laptop also. And I just kept it logging with this uh, program from uh, from David uh, Taylor and uh, you can have a great insight there how your uh, GPS is doing and especially for the Repco because it's a special uh, protocol. Well I will put it as a screen dump later but as you can see the satellites have always been full reception and uh, mostly I had eight satellites in uh, Fission. So we have it now on the on the big screen um, I'm using the software of David Taylor. Big thanks to, to David. If you're into the time nutri, really he made some great stuff. And this is one of it. This is for the Repco. And uh, I was really happy with this tool because I could see if my reception is good or not. And uh, I've been logging yesterday for more than 24 hours. So I just have my day from yesterday. And if you can see the signal here needs to be above uh, 4 and my lowest here is 5 but most of it is a lot lot higher so my reception nothing is wrong with that um, here the signal strength and well it has been in control all the time and because I blow up the screen you cannot see that it went from 3D to 2D oh that's here so it has been almost all the time in 3D mode and just sometimes in 2D but it doesn't matter because it's still at the fix so for syncing the 1 PPS this has not been a problem why if you look here at the numbers 100% has been in 3D well they say 29 pulses it has been in 2D in the rest of the 8000 it has been because all both the GPS's have been uh, running now for a few days, we can compare them. So I put my old uh, GPS, the BG7TBL, I put as external reference, and I am measuring now in the in the front the Repco. So if we measure a little difference here between the 10 megahertz, it's because of the two um, GPS DO not agreeing, but uh, we are here already very very low. But let me. Put another mode. This is more interesting, and then a longer gate time, so we don't miss any. And I'll leave this running for a while. Okay, I did now 12 scans of uh, 10 seconds, and as you can see, we are here. This is the hertz, so we are here below the thousands of a hertz that they uh, disagree and uh, I put it in statistics mode. So this is the current measuring. This is the average between what we had because there was a little one that was a little bit higher and uh, the minimum we measured. So this is quite close that they agree. And this could also be because this frequency counter is maybe not that good because it's also a VG7 TBL. It's not necessarily super, super high quality. It does do a good job, especially on external reference. But uh, there could be more than just that the two GPS DO don't agree. Um, I do not have extra zeros. I do also don't have a longer gate time because making this gate time longer also will make it measure more precise here so that's a pity i don't have a 30 seconds
So let's go to a more professional meter. That is my uh, Fluker Philips here. And uh, well, as you can see, uh, it uh, thinks that both uh, GPS DOs are correct. I do have a zero less because we are here at one, two, three. One, two, three. So, but yeah, I would say they agree. Let me think, maybe I have a TTI that can do uh, more digits. Let me see how this works again, because I haven't been using this one. It's a pity, because but since I have a GPS DO, I don't use this one anymore. This one works great with, of course, but also without, without external reference, this one was spot spot on. So let me check. It needs to warm up a little bit, because I just switched it on. But let me put it on the input there. Oh, it immediately says it's good. But let me get more digit because this is 0.3. One second. 10 seconds. And then we start to add zeros. Look at that. And it's still warming, but let's just use external reference. What does it think then? Yes, it found it already. Well, now it thinks also it is spot spot on. Not sure if I can get another digit if I do 100 seconds. Well, even over 100 seconds, it uh, absolutely agrees. Well, that is just super amazing that both the GPS DO agree. So. Uh, you can think, oh, after so many years, the Repco is still working, uh, still working strong. And uh, yeah, that is some serious, serious quality there. So not, uh, I didn't expect uh, any other. But if I compare it to my BG7 TBLs, uh, they agree. So it is also not that bad. So that is kind of nice discovery because I was afraid oh, I'm taking a big risk here to compare those two. And what, they, what if I find out that I don't agree at all, then uh, yeah, then I start to use the Repco. Well, I probably will do anyway. But uh, I think it's also good to, to know that, that these, uh, these modern ones are also uh, very good and uh, they take uh, they take, of course, a lot less power if you run them 24 hours. But uh, if I have a very special project when I need uh, even higher accuracy as, as these, then I probably will rely on the on the Repco. But I would just leave it running also just, uh, yeah, it's a lot cooler. <laughs> oh, and uh, by the way, I managed to uh, to extract the EMEA data from the second uh, serial, but I wasn't paying attention. I didn't read well. I thought that I read somewhere that you don't need any buffering and nothing. You can just connect it directly. And also because on the on the first output there was a D9 plug, which put me on the wrong foot. And I was thinking, okay. Then it must be serial output there, but it is not. It is TTL output there, and that's why I just read a lot of garbage on my serial port. And or what I read was about the test board that they have, because I have here the test main board, and here I just see a max two three two. So then I said, okay, I was just not paying attention. And of course, if it comes out from the main chip, why would there be other two three two? It should have been a TTL. So that was my mistake, not thinking. So what I did, I have here, uh, I put here a little TTL to serial adapter and uh, I connect it to the computer like this and then I can read data. So then I have both the exports, the exports from the weird Repco that, uh, that you can read with the program from uh, David Taylor and uh, the other serial port I have now the the NMEA. Well, I have here the schematic of the of the main board of the test board, and here is my 8-pin connector, and here it goes to this uh, Max 232, and then of course it goes to the two serial ports here, and uh, I just never looked at this, and uh, that's why I made this silly uh, mistake. But here you can see it is the Max uh, 232. So I just took um, one of those uh, cheap TTL to USB converters. I think it is the CH340 or the 341 chipset, and those work 
perfectly fine. I think you buy them for two dollars. I can leave them in the links, but uh, they do the job uh, well enough. Well, let me show you the the NMIA output. I need to see what with ports I connected to. So let me check. Device manager, go to ports. So it must be COM5, I think. Um, yeah, I think I can use this program. Uh, COM5. And here you can see that we do have NMIA output but it is not that good we don't see the satellite information you only see your location and your uh, height because it is an early version yeah we don't see it that well here so maybe if i use an older version here of can i see here the NIA? yes uh, con 5 i think he said yeah here it comes so this is the date and it only does the GP, GGA and the VT, VTG and uh, so the information, how many satellites are there, all that information is not there yet because this is one of the early versions of uh, EMEA but it does give you enough information so it's cool to have, you can just connect this, use this DTL to USB converter and uh, you can go here, you can see my position, altitude is already there and now, so yeah perfect that works fine that was amazing we got to play with the repco 1804 and it was the big piece the p9 version with uh, five outputs for 10 megahertz so no no adjustment needed because the other ones are usually five megahertz so i was very very lucky with this one so big big thank you to steve from uh, G8XGG and he has a company that also makes uh, Digimode cables so if you want to connect uh, if you want to do FT8 or uh, you, you can connect your transmitter to the computer and uh, you want it isolated of course because you don't want to have currents going around so he makes those cables uh, only isolated or also with integrated sound cards you just plug it into your USB so have a look at his website uh, xggcoms.com I will leave it below big big thank you for donating this uh, this GPSDO the professional one I hope you enjoyed that uh, you also now have an idea how you can extract the NMIA if you are interested uh, for that and uh, I had a great time thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time